Als je een misdrijf wil plegen, dan kun je maar beter schone schoenen hebben, niet het water ingaan en geen stuifmeel op je kleding meenemen. Maar dan zijn er ook nog altijd beestjes die belangrijke getuigen kunnen zijn. Zoals insecten die graag in een lijk hun eitjes leggen. There are many different ways that you can use insects on crime scenes or in criminal cases. For example, if you know their lifestyle, you can make an estimate, a scientifically based estimate, about how long was the body inhabited by insects. And that probably helps the police. For example, they would ask you, okay, Mark, um, is the body there longer than three months? And then I would say no. Certainly not. If they ask you, okay, how long exactly was the body there? That's a little bit more tricky. But depending on how much information you have, the growth rate, the species of the type of insect and so on, sometimes you can even determine the time when the yeah, inhabitation of the body started. And there are many other things that you can do. For example, let's say a body was killed somewhere in an apartment and then it was brought outside. Uh, three weeks later, it's already decomposed, but no insects on the body because it was covered in a, in a plastic bag. And now it's brought outside, wrapped, let's say, in a blanket, and then brought with a car to a sea and then thrown into the sea. And then the insects in the carpet are probably the insects from the edge of the forest. So let's say we, we get the carpet and the corpse, and then we see, hmm, strange, all these insects, they don't even live inside of apartment buildings, you know, they live outside at the edge of a forest. And then one of the police people would probably say, wait a second, there was a witness who was referring to a strange sighting at the edge of a forest. There was a guy with a yellow car, and he could not really see what was happening there, but it was unusual. So maybe let's look at the owner of the yellow car at the edge of the forest. So there's not one way to deal with insects or corpses, but several ways. There are literally limitless possibilities to non-human biological traces on crime scenes. For example, um, a colleague of mine, when we were working in uh, New York at the chief medical examiner's office, took sperm and put it on uh, tissue and put some maggots on top, blowfly maggots. And then he observed that the maggots would ingest the sperm, which means that in a real case, let's say you have rain after, you know, sexual assault case in which the rain washes away evidence, then you can still look into the gut of the maggots. You know, you cut open the, the gut of the maggot and then you can uh, take out the sperm heads and then you have the DNA of a person who deposited sperm there, which may be of relevance or may not be of relevance, but we don't care. It's just a piece of evidence. Every crime scene is different. You really cannot apply the rules that you used last time to your next crime scene. Every day is completely different. Like in a case that we had, you have a body that is half inside of the water and half outside of the water. And I have just 10 minutes because everybody is like, Mark, we need to transport the body away. It needs to be checked for stab wounds. It's nice that you're here, but don't disturb us too much. So I go into the water and I collected the insects from different parts of the body. Later, it was found that the oldest insects were in the area of the decomposed penis where the underpants were. And the reason was that it was very cold and the sun was shining. And insects don't like that, maggots especially. They like it warm and humid and dark. So they would all like randomly crawl around to hide. And the only area where they could hide was in the underpants. And um, it was it was uh, nutritious there for them because there was decomposing tissue and we collected them. And we were thinking, okay, now we could normally determine the colonization interval. How long did the insects live on this body? To determine the age of a maggot, you need to know, first of all, the temperature. The warmer it is, the faster they develop. 
you also need to determine the species because every species has a different growth rate. So uh, to determine the species, you can put the insects under the microscope. Um, you can also use DNA. Uh, it just extract a little bit of DNA out of them. So there are uh, different techniques to do that. But you must have the temperature and the species. That's the minimal. <laughs> If you think that what you do must, you know, give you money, fame, or anything, or, or <laughs> social protection or anything, then you just can't do it. Because, you know, the few cases that later are reported in the press or, you know, somewhere, um, these, that's just one ten thousandth of what we really do. <laughs> And most of it is of nobody wants to hear about it. The, when the students come and I say, okay, there's one thing that may sound silly to you, but don't talk about parties, about what you really do. Because people after the training, they will ask you, how was the forensic training? Forensics is super interesting. And the moment you start to really get into the details and everybody's going to be like, oh, it's late. I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> because it's too boring, too disgusting, too irrelevant, too socially repulsive. Um, if you really talk about it. So what you, what I personally do is when people ask me, um, and I, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a biologist. And then no more questions. Nobody ever asks a question because it's like if you're saying you're, you're interested in chemistry or physics, biology, then everyone's like, um, okay, I, no, I have no question. <laughs> Let's drink a beer. Yeah, not even. Let's not drink a beer. <laughs>